Hello, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Well, um, <laughs> I was recording the video on consequences, and um, my computer kind of froze. I had to pause it because there are electrical guys out there, and Xena was going off. And I come in to unpause it, and my computer just froze up. And I was an hour and 36 minutes within that video, and I lost it. <laughs> Goodness gracious. So I'm going to have to redo that whole thing. And I was um, nearing towards the end of that video. But um, anyway, so I have another one. Um, I'm going to do this and get this uploaded, and then I'm going to come back and do the video on consequences later this evening. This video, brethren, is going to be about complaining, murmuring. Sometimes uh, we can find ourselves complaining about things and murmuring about things. And whining about things. I know whining is not uh, found in the authorized version of the, King, of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, but um, sometimes we can do that, can't we? Can't we? And we're going to look here in the scriptures about this, that God does not necessarily care for complaining. Some of you might be saying, well, we're told to, uh, you know, well, in prayer, we can we complain to God about things. There's a difference there. We're going to see that, okay? So, get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, and turn in your King James scriptures to Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. Now, we need to remember that um, this Exodus chapter 15 is where they sing this, this song after the Lord had brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, okay? Rescued them from Pharaoh, okay? Had just brought them out. They had experienced all the miracles. They saw all the miracles, all the plagues that the Lord did upon Pharaoh, okay? They saw all of that. And the Lord got them out of Egypt, okay? Then they sing the, uh, then sang the uh, Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord. That's verse one. Right after this, Okay, right after being brought out. Exodus chapter 15, verses 23 on to verse 27. Okay, right after they sang praises to the Lord. Thank you for bringing us out of Egypt. Thank you for delivering us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 15, verses 23 on to verse 27. Go there. You are expected to go there in the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Beginning at verse 23. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured, against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord shewed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them, and said, Now note this, if, circle if, 
Thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. And they came to Elam, where were twelve wells of water, and three score and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. So right away you see murmuring. What should we drink? What, what, what are we going to do? Immediately after they were brought out of Egypt and saw all these uh, miracles, all these signs, all these wonders. Exodus chapter 16 now, verses 1 under verse 15. And they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. On the fifteenth day of the second month, after their departing out of the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Now, keep this in mind. What the Lord had done for the children of Israel just previously. Keep this in mind. And for our instruction in righteousness there, Church of the Living God. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, <laughs> Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we saw when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. <laughs> yeah, talk about gratefulness, huh? Talk about gratefulness? Let's continue. Then said the Lord unto Moses, now note here initially the Lord's reaction. I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them, whether they will walk in my law or no. Now it's not that the Lord didn't know. It was proving them that they might know what is in their own heart. Verse 5. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And Moses and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel, At even, then ye shall know that the Lord hath brought you out from the land of Egypt. And in the morning, then ye shall see the glory of the Lord, for that he heareth your murmurings against the Lord. And what are we that ye murmur against us? It's against the Lord, not against Moses and Aaron. Keep that in mind, Church of the Living God. And Moses said, This shall be, when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full. For that the Lord heareth your murmurings, which ye murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. Tell me something, Church of the Living God. Let's say the Lord has provided something for you. Something that you needed. Not that you lusted after. Not something after your greed. Are you complaining about it? <laughs> For example, we came, we went from a house to an apartment 
having very noisy neighbors upstairs who decide to uh, have a football game upstairs at 11.30, 10.30 at night. But this is what the Lord gave us. I'm complaining. Okay? Have you ever found yourself complaining, murmuring against the Lord for Him providing your need? And say, thank you, Lord, for giving me this, but I would rather have had, oh, that's dangerous. Brother, sister, that's very dangerous. Let's continue. From verse 9. And Moses spake unto Aaron, Say unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he hath heard your murmurings. And it came to pass, as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, At even ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know, circle no in your set of scriptures, that I am the Lord your God. And it came to pass that at even the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay round about the host. Remember the quails. Hinge that. Remember the quails. Let's read that again. And it came to pass that at even the quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning the dew lay round about the host. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing. As small as the hoarfrost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna. For they wist not what it was. That's what manna means. You have the definition right there. Wist not. What is it? And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. And the Lord Jesus Christ uh, makes a comparison of this of himself. Not the Eucharist. In uh, John chapter 6. And you could read that on your own time. John chapter 6 verses 25 on to verse 71. You can read that on your own time, okay? But remember, the quails, okay? So they murmured against the Lord, and the Lord here in verse 4, note his reaction. So, okay, here's manna. And not only manna, but I'll give you quails to eat. The Lord will provide for your need, not your greed, okay? And he fed the children of Israel. He took care of them to prove them. Look at verse 4 again. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. Okay? You, you with me so far? Now, remember the quails? Go to Numbers, chapter 11. Numbers, chapter 11. Numbers, chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 6. And when the people complained. Now, Numbers is right after Leviticus. Um, and they had received the law. And after the book of Leviticus, they had gotten all the statutes, the testimonies, the ordinances, okay? The Lord has been doing all this stuff for the children of Israel. Okay? Yet they're complaining. Um, brother, sister, church of the living God, is the Lord taking care of you? Providing for your need, not your greed. And you're complaining about it. Are you complaining about his provision that he has given you? Thank you for... Thank you for giving me ramen. 
but I'd rather have a filet mignon steak. Let's continue this. Let's check this out. And when the people complain on uh, Numbers 11, verses 1 under verse 6 to start, okay, we're going to do some skipping around in this chapter. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. And the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them, and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of the place Taborah, because the fire of the Lord burnt amongst them, burning. Taborah, burning. You have the definition of the name within the text. You see that? Verse 4. On verse 6, and the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic with a K. <laughs> But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. And you might have heard the axiom, if you eat steak every day, eventually you get tired of steak, right? <laughs> Remember, Church of the Living God, what the Lord brought you out from. And his provision he has given you. Are you grateful for that? Or are you whining and complaining about it and wish he had done something better for you? Oh. 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 That's dangerous, brethren. It's very dangerous. Now we're skipping some, and we are going to go from verses 10 on to verse 23. Okay? Verses 10 on to verse 23. Uh, verses 7 on to verse 9 describe the manna itself. Okay? So, verses 10 on to verse 23 in Numbers chapter 11. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent, and the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased, and Moses said unto the Lord, Now remember, the children of Israel were complaining about the provision given to them by the Lord, after all he had done for them. Here, Moses is going to the Lord like... <laughs> Oy vey, Lord! Check this out. And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? It's like, Lord! <laughs> There's a difference here. See if you can note the difference. And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight, that thou layest the burden of all this people upon me? Have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them? That thou shouldest say unto me, Carry them in thy bosom, as a nursing father beareth the sucking child unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers. When should I have flesh to give unto all this people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. Note this. Note verse 14. I am not able to bear all this people alone because it is too heavy for me humility humility uh, in the complaining from verses 1 on to verse 6 um, was there any humility in that the Lord um, heard the complaint of Moses like Lord 
But right here, verse 14, I am not able to bear all this people alone because it is too heavy for me. Verse 15, and look at this humility. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me, I pray thee, out of hand. If I have found favor in thy sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. My wretchedness. Let that roll around in your head a little bit. Let's continue. And look at this. Look at how the Lord answered him. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there, and will take of the Spirit which is upon thee, that's the Lord case S, and will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. And say thou unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh. <coughs> Excuse me. For ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> ye shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days, but even a whole month, until it come out at your nostrils, and it be loathsome unto you because that ye have despised the Lord, which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we forth out of Egypt? Ooh. Note this. Note this, brethren, sisters, okay? The Lord gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. That's in the Psalms. Go find it. Okay? Lord's like, okay. You're gonna you're gonna be ungrateful, unthankful to me after what I've done for you? And you're gonna complain to me like this? Okay, you want? Here. Just jams it down their throat. Until until what? Verse 20, but even a whole month until it come out your nostrils and it be loathsome unto you. Careful what you wish for. Be careful what you're asking for. You might just get it. And check Moses' response now. Now note the humility in verse 14 and 15, but check this out. Verse 21. And Moses said, The people amongst who I am are 600,000 footmen. And thou hast said, I will give them flesh that they may eat a whole month? Shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them to suffice them? <coughs> or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to suffice them? The Lord, uh, Moses is like, uh, Lord, how, you, how, how is this going to happen? And look at the Lord's response. And the Lord said on to Moses, Is the Lord's hand waxed short? Thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. Yeah, I know the Lord can provide for me, but... Yeah, I know. He will provide my need. Yeah, oh, I have ramen to eat, but I, I, I wish, I just pray he would have given me a, a filet mignon instead. <laughs> oh, be careful. Be very careful with that, brethren, sisters. 
Now we're skipping a little bit more to verses 31 on to verse 35. Okay? Now this is about how um, the Spirit came on the um, 70 and stuff like that. Okay? We're skipping that. But I want us to look at this. Verses 31 on to verse 35. Okay? Note, again, where the Lord said, about the quails in verse 19, you shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days, but even a whole month, until it come out your nost at your nostrils. Check this out. Verses 31 on to verse 35. And there went forth a wind from the Lord, and brought quails from the sea, and let them fall by the camp, as it were a day's journey on this side, and as it, as it were a day's journey on on the other side, he really like, whoop! <laughs> you want it? You want it? Huh? Is what you want, Church of the Living God, are your desires in accordance with the scriptures that the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, may be glorified? Wait, I don't think he's going to provide for you. Your need, not your greed, huh? And then when he does, oh, I wish I would have. I wish he would have given me something else or better. <laughs> oh, oh, brother, sister, you need to watch out. And brother, sister, church of the living God, I'm not talking to you wicked, lost people, you fakes, you coadjutors, you Jesuits, you infiltrators. Go, go away. I'm talking to the church of the living God. That's in your heart. You need to check yourself. You need to examine yourself. You really do. Okay, excuse me, let's continue. And know, too, that it was a day's journey on this side and that side. Okay, let's continue. Let's reread this. And there went forth a wind from the Lord, and brought quails from the sea, and let them fall by the camp, as it were a day's journey on this side, as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. A cubit is something like this. I forget what it is in inches, but two of these, that high, that deep, a day's journey on this side and on that side. <laughs> Do you fear the Lord? Let's continue. And the people stood up all that day and all that night and all the next day, and they gathered the quails. He that gathered least gathered ten homers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. Now check this out, verse 33. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. And he called the name of that place Kibaroth Hatava, because there they buried the people that lusted. The, the definition buried the people that lusted. Buried the people that lusted. That's the definition of Kibaroth Hatava. And the people journeyed from Kibaroth Hatava unto Hezeroth. An abode at his roof. Brother, sister, church of the living God, you need to be very careful. If you find yourself whining, complaining about the provision that the Lord has so graciously given you, that hello, hi, you do not deserve. Hi, hello. Don't 
anything to skip thanks? Don't worry, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Wait for it, okay? Now, go to Exodus, go back to Exodus chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17. I have known those of the Church of the Living God who have complained about the Lord's provision. My brother, you need to watch out for that. Be thankful that he gave it to you. Oh, I know, but you're in very, you're, you're in very dangerous territory of making the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, angry. Oh, he doesn't get angry at his children today. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 and verse 7. Okay. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys, according to the commandment of the Lord, and pitched in Rephidim. And there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses, and said, Give us water, that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do ye tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water, and the people murmured against Moses, and said, <laughs> Are you seeing this? Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt, to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, oh, <laughs> can, you, can you picture it? What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pay attention. Pay attention. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee the elders of Israel, and thy rod, wherewith thou smotest the river. Take in thine hand, and go. Verse 6. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb. Okay? Note, I will and the rock. Rock there is lowercase r, obviously. But note that. Okay? Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb. And thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. <clears throat> and he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah, because of the chiding of the children of Israel, and because they be and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Look at verse six. Verse 6, okay? Hold your place there and go to Numbers. Again, to Numbers, chapter 20. Numbers, chapter 20. Numbers, chapter 20, verses 1 under verse 13. Numbers, chapter 20, verses 1 under verse 13. Then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of Zin, Zin, in the first month. And the people abode in Kadesh, and Miriam died there, and was buried there. And there was no water for the congregation, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people chode with Moses and spake, saying, Would God that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. <clears throat> and why have ye brought up 
the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness, that we and our cattle should die there. Why have you done this to us? And wherefore have ye made us to come up out of Egypt? To bring us in unto this evil place. It is no place of seed, or of figs, or of vines, or of any, or of pomegranates. Neither is there any water to drink. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Pay attention. Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. And speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. And it shall bring forth his water. And thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts to drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord, as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And pay attention to this. And he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice. Bam, bam! And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. Do you notice that? Look at verse 8. What did the Lord tell Moses to do? Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. And it shall bring forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. He told them to speak unto the rock. And note, rock there is all lowercase r. And what did Moses do? Verse 11. <clears throat> and Moses, now granted, Moses was angry. But in the video that unfortunately my computer messed up on, uh, consequences, okay? Moses was angry. And what did he do? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice, and water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believe, because ye believe me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. To sanctify me, look at verse 10, must we fetch you water out of this rock? This is the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord, and he was sanctified in them. Meribah strove, striving. Okay? Go back to Exodus chapter 17. Look at verse 6. Behold, I will stand before thee. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come, out, come water out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Smite, singular. Okay? And here in Numbers chapter 20, verse 11, how many times did Moses smite the rock? Twice. Hold your places, okay? Go to the book of John. 
the book of John. Oh, some of you probably know what I'm leading us up to, don't you? Don't you? John? <clears throat> John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Verses 7 on to verse 14. Come on. John chapter 4, verses 7 on to verse 14. The woman at the well. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, Askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. This, brethren, Church of the Living God, sisters, is what we call a type Jesus Christ died for our sins once. He was stricken. He died one time. Okay? And because of his death, burial, and resurrection, according to the scriptures, out of him come living water. He was smitten for our sins once. He died for our sins once. Okay? He was smitten once for us. Here you see in Exodus chapter 17, verse 6. But in Numbers chapter 20, verse 8, Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water. Speak. Speak unto him, and there shall come water thereout. Do you see that? But see, Moses, in verse 11, smote the rock twice. Yes, water came out abundantly, but it cost him dearly. Consequence. Christ does not need to be re sacrificed over and over and over again as Roman Catholicism, the Jesuits teach you through their blasphemous mass. Do you get it? The typology here. Do you get it? And when you go to smite the rock when he has already been smitten, you know, oh yeah, things can come out, yes, but you pay a heavy price for it. See, for in that he died for sins, he died once, and those waters come out of him. Get it? And once you drink of those waters, you need only to speak unto the rock, not smite him again. Do you get it? Yeah? You see that?
I hope you do. I hope you do. But you see, here again, the children of Israel complaining, murmuring. Oh, that we had flesh to eat. Oh, remember what the Lord said? Remember Lot's wife? When she looked behind, when she was warned of the angels not to look behind, what happened? She became a pillar of salt. She longed for what she was leaving behind. And the children of Israel were brought out of the, the land of Egypt. Saw all these great things. And yet found fault with the Lord. Now, Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13, verses 26 on to verse 33. Numbers chapter 13, verses 26 on to verse 33. Quickly, the Lord tells Moses to send men out to spy out the land of Canaan, to go check it out and bring back a report, okay? To bring like the fruit thereof and whatnot, go check it out, okay? Go see. He did this for a reason. He did this for a reason. The Lord said to these people, there it is. There's the promised land. Go get it. I'm going to be with you. But he sent these spies out to go spy out the land. Okay? That's the backstory. You can read that on your own time. Check this out. Okay? Check this out. Talk about consequences. Check this out. Numbers chapter 13, verses 26 on to verse 33. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron. These are the people returning with all the news. And to all the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them, and unto all the congregation, and shewed them the fruit of the land. And they told them, and said, we came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Look at this. Are you looking at that? Check this out. Nevertheless, but, nevertheless, the people are strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Ankh there, and the Amalekites, dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea, and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Whoa, 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 whoa. Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are, are well able to overcome it. Because the Lord was with them. You see? Verse 31. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And in a way that was true. But they were forgetting something, weren't they? Yeah, let's continue. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And, they, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Ankh, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. So, the Lord sends the people out. Verse 1, in uh, 
Exodus chapter 13. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give. Circle that. Circle that. Seriously. Which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. I give. I'm giving it to you. Go get it. I'm with you. They search out the land. They bring the stuff. But they bring up an evil report against the land. But, oh, they're bigger than we. Oh, we can't do it. And they're right. They couldn't do it. But the Lord was with them. Let's continue. Numbers 14. Now we're going to do some skipping around in this chapter. Okay? Numbers 14, verses 1 through 12. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel <laughs> murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, <laughs> Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt. Or would God we had died in this wilderness. Note that. And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? Think about that. Think about that. Okay? Verse 2 in Numbers chapter 13, which I give unto the children of Israel. There it is. I'm giving that to you. Go get it. But he sends these people out to search. Why did he do that? Well, well, look. Do you see? Have you seen already in uh, Numbers chapter 13, verse 28? Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Ankh there. Verse 31. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Let's continue in uh, Numbers chapter 14, verse 4. And they said one to another, Let us make a captain, and let us return into Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Verse 6. And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Aha! Verse 9. Only... Rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people. Fear man bringeth a snare, but whosoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made safe. Hello? Neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Pretty simple, right? Verse 10. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? How long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I, which I have shewed among them, 
I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them, and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. And now we're going to be skipping where Moses acts as the intercessor. Okay, we're going to be skipping that. Numbers 14, verses 21 now on to 45. Okay? Verses 21 on to verse 45. Can you handle this? But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. You could say that's a, um, a prophecy, in a way, for the Gentiles being grafted into the tree of Israel. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have tempted me now these ten times and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. But... My servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and hath followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land wherein two he went, and his seed shall possess it. Now the Amalekites and the Can Canaanites dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow turn you, now pay attention, tomorrow turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. It's like, okay, you blow it. Let's go. You blew it. That's something to know too there, Church of the Living God. The Lord can give you a chance. But if you doubt the Lord who is doing it through you, you can lose a chance forever. Or for a time. Hello. Hi. Let's continue. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation, which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number. From twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Doubtless, ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make, which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. But your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. The provision that ye have despised. Think about that. You know the Lord is gracious and merciful unto you and gives you provision and you complain about it. It's quite possible. He could take it from you and give it on to someone else. Huh? Let's continue. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, and bear your whoredoms, until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which ye search the land, even forty days, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise." He was going to give it to him then. But they doubted the Lord. Okay, I was going to give it to you now. Now, now you're going to pay for it. Consequences. I, the Lord, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me in this wilderness. They shall be consumed, and there they shall die. And the men which Moses sent to search the land, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him, by bringing up a slander upon the land, 
Even those men that did bring up that, the evil report upon the land died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of the men that went to search the land, lived still. And Moses told these sayings unto all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. Check this out. Now, Look at verse 25. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwelled in the valley. Tomorrow turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. You blew it. That's it. You're not going there. Turn around. You're done. Check this out. Verse 40. And they rose up early in the morning and got them up into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here, and we go up unto the place which the Lord hath promised, for we have sinned. It's like, okay, yeah, 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 you're right. Let's go. You're right, Lord. And Moses said, Wherefore now do ye transgress the commandment of the Lord? Verse 25. But it shall not prosper. Verse 42, Go not up, for the Lord is not among you, and ye that ye be not smitten before your enemies. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and ye shall fall by the sword, because ye are turned away from the Lord. Therefore, the Lord will not be with you. Okay, you notice in verse 40, they're like, okay, we've sinned. Okay, let's go. Moses warns them, don't do it. You blew it. The Lord's not with you. Look at verse 44. But they presumed to go up onto the hilltop. They went anyway. Nevertheless, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. Then the Amalekites came down and the Canaanites which dwelt in that hill and smote them and discomfited them, even unto Hormah. Do you see? So, the children of Israel were given the uh, were, were given that. It's like here, here it is. Go get it. All they had to do was trust in the Lord, that the Lord would be in them as they went, be with them as they went and did it. But they didn't trust in the Lord. They saw the wind, boisterous, similar to Peter when he began to sink in the water because he took his eyes off of Jesus, remember? He saw the wind boisterous. Wherefore didst thou doubt? The Lord's like, there, there, see that? Go get it. I'm going to be with you. But see, he sent these people out because he knew. He knew. And these people learn of their own obstinate self. It's a very dangerous thing, brethren, when you start complaining. Because all kinds of things, especially when you have this as an example. Especially when you have this as an example. Very dangerous. Now, very quickly, Psalm 142. Psalm 142. Psalm 142. Come on, fingers, work with me. We're going to read this whole psalm. Psalm 142. I hope we can handle it. Now, we're reading this because David is pouring his heart out to the Lord. But he's not complaining about the provision given him. That's the difference. We can complain to the Lord 
of our sufferings, of our trials, and stuff like that. But when you start complaining to the Lord about what he has done for you and given you, <laughs> God don't like that. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaints before him. I shewed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. In the way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me. I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. Note the exhortation, though, unto the Lord in the psalm. Even though he's pouring out his complaint, he's still exhorting the Lord. Whereas we have seen in the Torah, the first five books, they were just complaining, being ungrateful, unthankful. Now, go to the book of Job. Book of Job. Yeah, Brad, Brad, thank you, Brad. Too ahead of myself. Book of Job, chapter 3. Come on, work with me, fingers. Hopefully, you're already there. Okay? Job, chapter 3. Now, if you're not familiar with the book of Job, why not? Very quick backstory. Satan was allowed to afflict Job. Job was a righteous man, one that feareth God and eschewed evil. A testimony given about Job from the Lord himself. And in a succession of one, two, three, four, Job lost all his um, tangible possessions. And in that, in uh, Job chapter 1, he said, in verse, uh, Job chapter 1, verse 21, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay? Satan was allowed in a succession of four to take everything away from Job. Yet, Job said not. And then in chapter 2, Satan was allowed of the Lord to afflict Job physically. Physically. Got boils, sat down in ashes. His wife, <laughs> his wife turned on him. Thus thou, uh, where is that? Uh, verse 9 in Job chapter 2. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity, curse God, and die? Hit him physically. Okay? Job chapter 3. Job chapter 3. And he was still, still, the testimony of Job by God himself, that he is a just and upright man, one that feareth God, and one that escheweth evil. And he didn't sin against the Lord by laying a charge against him uh, foolishly. Okay? Job chapter 3. After this opened Job his mouth, and cursed his day. And Job spake and said, Let the day perish wherein I was born, and the night in which I was set, where in which it was said, There is a man child conceived. Let that day be darkness, let not God regard it from above, neither let the light shine upon it. Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. As for that night, let darkness seize upon it. Let it not be joined unto the days of the year. Let it not come into the number of the months. Lo, let that night be solitary. Let no joyful voice come therein. 
Let them curse it that curse the day, who are ready to raise up their morning. Let the stars of the twilight thereof be dark, let it look for light, but have none. Neither let it see the dawning of the day, because it shut not up the doors of my mother's womb, nor hid sorrow from mine eyes. Why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent me? Or why the breasts that I should suck? For now should I have lain still and been quiet. I should have slept. Then had I been at rest. With kings and counselors of the earth, which built desolate places for themselves. Or with princes that had gold, who filled their houses with silver. Or as an hidden, untimely birth, I had not been. As infants, which never saw light. There the wicked cease from troubling, and there the weary are at, be at rest. There the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. The small and great are there, and the servant is free from his master. Wherefore is light given to him that is in misery, and life unto the bitter in soul, which long for death, but it cometh not, and dig for it more than for hid treasures? which rejoice exceedingly and are glad when they can find the grave? Why is light hidden to a man whose way is hid and whom God hath hedged in? For my sighing cometh before I eat and my roarings are poured out like the waters. For the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me and that which I was afraid of has come unto me. I was not in safety Neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. Now see, Job rightfully was pouring out his complaint unto the Lord, unto God. There was no reason, because Job was, what did the Lord say of Job? That he was an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Twice that was said of Job in chapters 1 and chapter 2. Okay? Job did nothing to warrant of his own actions this temptation. Okay? He didn't. But the Lord allowed it. And it's not because the Lord is cruel. No. 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 Righteous people will suffer. for the glory of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Now, in chapter 2, you see that uh, his three friends came to mourn with them. And when they saw that his grief was very great, they didn't say a word. They shut their mouth and just sat there and sat with him. Sometimes, brethren, Church of the Living God, when someone's going through some, thing, some suffering like that, the best thing you can do is shut your mouth. And be a shoulder to cry on. Let them snot all over your favorite t-shirt. Okay? But now, let's look at what happens. Okay? Let's look at what happens. His three friends begin to open their mouth against Job. You're going to notice something here. Job chapter 4 verses 1 on to verse 7. Then Eliphaz the Temanite answered and said, If we essay to commune with thee, wilt thou be grieved? But who can withhold himself from speaking, justifying himself? Behold, thou hast instructed many, and thou hast strengthened the weak hands. Thy words have upholden him that was falling, and thou hast strengthened the feeble knees. Check this out. But now it has come upon thee, and thou faintest. It toucheth thee, and thou art troubled. Is this not thy fear, thy confidence, thy hope, and the uprightness of thy ways? Right here. Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent, or where were the righteous cut off? And if you continue in chapter 4 and chapter 5, you will see that Eliphaz actually speaks some truth. But... 
He wrongfully, right here, from verses 5 on to verse 7, accused Job of sin when you have the reference of chapter 1 and 2 that Job did nothing of his own accord to allow this to happen to him. You see? You can read uh, chapter 4 and 5 on your own time, but... Eliphaz, he, he, he spoke truth. He did. But yet, condemning Job. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Yea, hath God said, For God, uh, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, that your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Where is that? That's right. Now, Job chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 10. Okay. Job chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 10. Then answered Bildad the Shuhite and said, how long wilt thou speak these things? And how long shall the words of thy mouth be like a strong wind? Get a load of that. Doth God pervert judgment? Or doth the Almighty pervert justice? Oh, it's building up. Do you feel it? If thy children sinned against him, and he have cast them away for their transgression, if thou wouldest seek unto God betimes and make thy supplication to the Almighty, right here, if thou wert pure and upright, surely now he would awake for thee and make the habitation of thy righteousness prosperous. There's something wrong with you. It's you. Can we have the testimony of one and two, chapters 1 and 2? Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. For we are but of yesterday, and know nothing, because our days upon earth are a shadow. Shall, they, shall not they teach thee, and tell thee, and utter words out of their heart? Now, if you continue, you'll see, again, Bildad speaks some truth, but... There again, falsely condemning Job, not speaking what is right, even though he spake truth. You see? You see? Now, Job chapter 15. Job chapter 15. Verses 1 under verse 13. Then answered Eliphaz the Temanite, and said, Should a wise man utter vain knowledge, and fill his belly with the east wind? Should he reason with unprofitable talk, or with speeches wherewith he could do no good? Yea, thou castest off fear, and restrainest prayer before God. For thy mouth uttereth thine iniquity, and thou choosest the, tr the tongue of the crafty. Thine own mouth condemneth thee, and not I. Thine own lips testify against thee. I know, I said on the verse 5, but to verse 6. Again, if you were to continue reading, you would speak truth. But you there again, falsely accusing Job. And you go through all of this, the whole book of Job, Look at verse uh, chapter 16, verse 1 and 2. Then Job answered and said, I have heard many such things. <laughs> Miserable comforters are ye all. They condemned him. They spoke some truth, but they still condemned him unjustly. And after this barrage from his three, his three friends, okay, 
after all of this, Job finally, Job finally, uh, Job chapter 38. Go to Job chapter 38. Job finally started justifying himself. Okay? You can see that in Job, in Job chapter 31. Okay? Job chapter 31. Uh, Read that on your own time. After he was constantly barraged and attacked by his friends while they were speaking truth, Job finally, in Job chapter 31, started justifying himself. He did. You can read Job chapter 31 for yourself. You know, look at what I've done. I've done this. I've done this. I've done this. Okay. Well, justified that this was brought upon him without cause. But see what happened after the barrage of attacks has led to Job being prideful. Okay? Okay? Now, we are skipping the discourse of Eliu, the young whippersnapper. Okay? <laughs> um, because Eliu, who is younger than the three other guys, wanted to justify Job, but he again condemned Job differently. But he did the same thing. Okay? He did the same thing. Okay? That's why we're skipping the discourse of Eliu, the young whippersnapper, okay? Job chapter 38, verses 1 on to verse 3. Job chapter 38. After all of this, the Lord finally says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man. For I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. And then the Lord goes on to ask him like something like close to a hundred questions, or something like seventy questions, or something like that. One after another, after another, after another. Like who, who, who are you talking to, boy? Who are you? Job chapter forty. Verses one on verse seven. Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer it. Whew. Look at this. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay mine hand upon my mouth. Once have I spoken. But I will not answer, yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. Look at this again. Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind and said, Gird up thy loins now like a man. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. Again, he's like, let's go. You ain't done yet. See, towards the end in there, in Job chapter 31, Job started boasting himself. Granted, his three friends didn't help it, but he started boasting himself, and Job had to be reminded of the glory of the Lord. Okay? The whole book of Job, in parallel to the time of Jacob's trouble, is a striking study for you to do on your own time. Comparing the book of Job, what the children of Israel are going to go through during the time of Jacob's trouble. Very fascinating study. I suggest you do that on your own time. Okay? Now, go to Job chapter 42. After the Lord hammered Job with all these questions. Then the Lord, then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not, 
things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Hearken, I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore, I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. Verses 7 on to verse 8. And it was so, that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends, for ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job hath. Notice who he did not condemn, or say anything to, or about, Eliu, the young whippersnapper. Let's continue. Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you. For him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly, in that ye have not spoken of me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. And then you see that he does that, that Job prays for them, and the Lord blesses Job abundantly. Do you see? Now, some of you might be saying, well, that, that's all Old Testament, Brad. That The Lord isn't like that today. He, you know, it's all under the blood. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. God of the Old Testament is the God of the New, God, uh, New Testament. One God, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, our Father, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 13. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual capital R rock that followed them, and that capital R rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples, to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Um, again, are you spending any time in the Old Testament there, Church of the Living God, brother, sister? Now, all these things happened unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore? For let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There is no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but with the temptation also, but with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. And let's read verse 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, Flee from idolatry. And what is that idolatry? Yourself. Yourself. Also literal idolatry, worshiping the, the Trinity, <coughs> excuse me, you know, or worshiping a building, man worship of a preacher or something like that. Whatever it is.
God doesn't like you complaining about what he has given you. It's a very dangerous place to be, brethren, Church of the Living God. But go to Philippians now. This is the Pauline Epistles. This dispensation. Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 21. Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 21. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out. It doesn't mean work to gain your salvation. That's nonsense. No. Let's continue. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding, fat, fat, ah, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ's. Right there again. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ's. Verse 14. Verse 13 and 14. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Verse 21. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. And of course, Philippians chapter 4, verses 10, on to verse 23. Philippians chapter 4, verses 10, under verse 23. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. For I know both how to be abased. Hello. I know how to abound. Hello. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Notwithstanding, ye have well done, ye have well done, that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians, know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 21, For all seek their own, not the things which are of Jesus Christ's, which are Jesus Christ's, for the glory of God. But I have all in a bound. I am full, having received of Epapharatus the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your greed according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. No. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren which are with me greet you. 
all the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 14 on to verse 24. Of course we had to come here. Of course. Now we exhort you, brethren. First um, Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 14, on to verse 24. Now we exhort you, brethren. Warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is evil. Uh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Beg your pardon. <laughs> Beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Here's a definition of a person again. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Because if you complain and murmur, a lot of things could go wrong for you. A lot of things. Brethren, are you thankful? Are you grateful? See, because when the Lord gives you what you need and you end up complaining about it, what are you doing? What are you doing? You are justifying yourself rather than the Lord. Oh yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I have. Some, thank you for giving me some need, but oh, we went from a house to this apartment. Oh yeah, I'm glad that we have a place to. But let me put it uh, quite frank. Yes, my name is Brad there, beloved brother Alexander Hartley. <laughs> I love you. Um, God don't like whiners. Those who whine about the provisions that he has given them. We are to take our complaints unto the Lord. Yes, we have looked at that. We have seen the evidence of that. Yes, yes. But when you start complaining, murmuring, to the Lord about what He has graciously given you. Got to be careful. Be thankful, brethren, sisters. Whether it's this big or that big, be thankful. I am thankful for every single little thing the Lord has given me, whether it be good. Whether it be evil. Because I reap what I sow. Now I understand why the um, the uh, first video, uh, because like I said at the beginning of this video, I was an hour and 36 minutes into this one about consequences. And I had to pause it and then my computer froze up and then it had to restart, and I lost the whole thing. Now I know why. He wanted me to go with this first. Okay. 
Be thankful, brethren, and beware of complaining, especially when the Lord has done you any good. For who are we to complain to him? What is the dust to complain to the potter? Right? I'm thinking, yeah, he gave me bread to eat, but I wish I had a little peanut butter on it. Oh, the Lord has given me to pay for my bills, for my food, but I wish I had a little more so I could do that. There was a man who I'm aware of who once said of Church of the Living God giving to him that, well, it was only a couple hundred bucks. Only. <sighs> wow. Wow. Talk about gratefulness. Talk about thankfulness. Are you thankful, brethren, sisters? I hope you are. I had. Father, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for messing up the first video so this one could be done. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, Father, my God. Um, you know I was going to get that thing done, no matter how long it took. But you wanted me to do this one first. And uh, hopefully, Lord willing, Lord Jesus Christ, Father, my God, later tonight, um, you will allow me to do that other video on consequences. Um, thank you, Father in heaven, our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, may you be glorified, Lord. May you be glorified. That's all I care about. That you be glorified, Lord. May you bless. Uh, may this be helpful unto someone, but that you may be glorified, Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, brethren, thank you. Uh, if you watched this, um, it's now 12.54. I started doing this at 9.30. I had originally wanted to uh, start at 7.30 or 8, but that didn't happen. And, uh, like I said, uh, I was doing this first, and then the computer went all schizo on me. So I've um, been doing this for a little bit today so far. But um, the next video, Lord willing, today uh, will be the one on consequences, the follow-up to this video. So I love you. I'm going to upload this now and uh, get things ready here around the house. I love you. Pray for one another, another as I pray for many of you. In Jesus' name, amen.